Okay, so in this lab, um, you might be wondering what the point of all this is. Uh, and you are right to question that. That's very good. Um, so what are we finding in this lab? What we're going to try and find is both a coefficient of lift and a coefficient of drag for the airfoil in question at all of the different angles of attack. So each angle of attack and each speed is going to spit out a different coefficient of drag and a different coefficient of lift. All right. Um, so basically, when we set it up in the in the air in the uh, wind tunnel, uh, we throw some air over the airfoil, and it creates a lift force and a drag force. Okay. Um, now, that doesn't sound too interesting, right? Um, you have a certain span, a certain cord, and a certain uh, fluid that's flowing over it, air, and you know, based on how fast the air is going and how wide the the cord and the span are, uh, you have a certain amount of lift, okay? Um, but this doesn't exactly help us because, you know, it might not, you might have in your scenario a wing that is bigger than one foot by six inches. Um, and in most cases you do. So you think even a small plane like a, uh, you know, uh, some remote control plane has even longer wings than that. Um, so why are we even testing this, this airfoil there? So the reason being is because in, an air, in a uh, wind tunnel like this, we're able to um, basically find the coefficient of lift and use that coefficient to uh, see how much force we would have, say, in a full scale model. So effectively, your co coefficient of lift is your lift force um, divided by rho times v squared times a over two, um, and the drag and the drag coefficient is largely the same thing. So this is the mathematical operation you're going to be doing. Um, a little explanation of that. So f sub l is lift force, f sub d is drag force. Um, this fancy looking p over here is is called rho. Um, it's a Greek letter. It stand, it means the density of air. Um, this v squared term here that's velocity squared. Um, and then A is your reference area, which is your cord length times the span, okay? Um, so basically the important thing that the CL allows you to do um, is for one, predict conditions that would be in a full scale test, okay? And what it also allows you to do is compare your lift and drag ratios pretty effectively. Um, so, and the reason it allows you to do that is because the A in both of these cases is the same. So using the same reference area allows you to directly compare your coefficient of lift to coefficient of drag. Um, this is important for a multitude of reasons. In a lot of cases, you want a very high lift to drag ratio. So you want as minimum drawback in the drag uh, port in the drag sector, and you want maximum trade-off for for lift, right? Um, there are certain other applications where high lift to drag ratio isn't super important and you basically just want a high lift and you don't necessarily care too much about how much drag you're creating because um, it's less important perhaps. Um, so yeah, uh, the coefficient effectively allows you to compare the lift and drag as well as see how uh, a airfoil will behave at full scale.